Praise the Lord. God bless each and every one of y'all today who join me. My name is Jimmy Miller with Trumpet of Truth Ministries. Today is Sunday, August the 18th, 2019, and the days are just flying by. Amen. I was going to put this little message out yesterday, but I've been laid up the last couple of days with a pull muscle in my lung or something. I, I don't know how that happened, but praise God, I'm doing better. Amen. I want to tell you thanks, first of all, for your support and your prayers. Your prayers are the most important thing in my life. And I welcome each and every one of you, those who don't know me and you're watching for the first time. My name is Jimmy Miller. I'm with Trumpet of Truth Ministries in New Orleans, Louisiana. <clears throat> uh, praise God. My, my dog, Mariah, she's still doing good. She's doing better and better every day. And I thank you for the prayers for that. And thank you for your, your support financially. God bless you. And tonight's message uh, I want to speak about, and I guess I, I would title it, The Death of America. The Death of America. Some say that the death started with Elvis Presley with the rock and roll stuff, but no, I remember when I was a kid that wasn't the case. I'll tell you when I actually believed that when America started to die. It all started back in 1963. I was 11 years old then. And in 1963, they had a well-known atheist, and her name was Madeline Murray O'Hare. And in 1963, prayer was taken out of school. When I was a little kid, we had prayer in the morning time. We stood up and put our hands over our heart, and we and the, the principal would come over and lead us in prayer. We'd put our hand over our heart and say the Pledge of Allegiance and stuff like that. It was uh, a godly nation back then. But then in 1963, uh, they took the Bible out of school. They took Bible reading out of school. They took the prayer out of school. And that woman by the name of Madeline Murray O'Hare, she consolidated with this Abington School District in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. And she got this so-called um, ball roll, if you will, and her and the Abington School District, I guess the, the head honcho, the, the superintendents or whatever, um, they got together and, they, and, and her case was heard by the Supreme Court. They took it all the way to the Supreme Court. And I guess they got some demonic atheist judge or some democratic judge who believed that, that uh, prayer and God shouldn't be in school and they took the prayer out of school. And you know, God is a gentleman. He is, he is a gentleman. And you know, as they told him, get out of school, they told God, we don't want you in school, just go ahead and get out. Well, God's a gentleman. So God took and he packed all his stuff and put it in a suitcase, so to speak. Uh, he took his, his, his books of righteousness and he took, he took his love and he took his commandments. He took his holiness and his righteousness and he took his respect. He took his honor and he took his peace and he just packed it up and walking out of school. And as he walked down the hallways out of school, as he, God's walking out the door with a suitcase of righteousness and holiness, here comes Satan walking into school with his suitcase of unrighteousness, his suitcase of wickedness, and in his suitcase he had cursing and drugs and alcohol, fighting, anger, disrespect, drugs, and even murder. So that's what's happened today, why the kids are going to penitentiary. So they take the Bible out of school, right? But now these kids have grown up and on the way of growing up because they, they, they had God and the Bible taken out of their life, many of them wind up in prison. And what is the first thing they do when you go to prison? They'll hand you a Bible so you can read the Bible. Well, if they'd have kept that Bible in school, amen? Perhaps those people, those men and women, wouldn't have went to prison. They would have turned to God. But because this atheist went to the high Supreme Court with the, with the superintendents of the school board, 
and had prayer and the Bible taken out of school. She created the first issue of the American Atheist Magazine, Madeline Murray O'Hara. Many of you know her name. Well, she met her demise in September 29, 1995. Her, her son John Murray O'Hara, I guess his last name is O'Hara, but her son John, he was 40, she was 76, and her granddaughter was 30. They met their demise up in the mountains in the woods where they had the scruntal employee of the American Atheist. He was a former employee of the American Atheist Movement. And he took them and he cut them up, he dismembered them, and he cut their heads off. Now, I could just imagine right now with Miss Marilyn Murray O'Hare, O'Hare, I can imagine they believe in God now. I don't think that she's down in hell preaching there's no God. She's probably screaming and weeping for a God that she did not believe in, a God that she turned people against to believe there was no God. I'm sure she's screaming and weeping for him to let her out. But no, the next step will be Judgment Day for Miss Madeline Murray O'Hare and her son and her granddaughter. They were all well-known atheists. So they took prayer out of school and prayer was canceled and, and, and uh, you know, that's what happens when you, cancel, when you cancel prayer out of school. It doesn't work. So let me put some more music back on. I got a commercial here and I'm going to I'm I'm mute this commercial while we go. But you know, um, so let's jump to 1966. This threw me off guard, I'm sorry. Let's jump to 1966. In 1966, three years later, a man by the name of Anton LaVey. Anton LaVey, for those who don't know who Anton LaVey is, Anton LaVey <clears throat> opened up the first satanic church in the United States. And he had a house, it was left to him, or it was willed to him, or it was given to him some way or another by his parents. Well, they painted the house black and they called it the Church of Satan. And that, that, that was in San Francisco at 6114 California Street. And that's where the Church of Satan originated and started. Now you have Church of Satan all over the place. But that was the main headquarters. Now, America's cancer is starting to grow. The cancer was started off as a little bobo by taking prayer in the Bible out of school. Then the cancer is spreading now to where there's a satanic Bible to take the Bible's place. And the satanic Bible it was, was published and written and was published by Anton LaVey in 1969. So 1969, the Bible was placed, and guess what? Those who never read the Bible or would not read the Bible in school now have an opportunity to read the satanic Bible. The cancer is now growing upon America. America is dying. Anton LaVey was born April 11, 1930, and he died and entered eternally, well, into Judgment Day, into a place called hell, October 29, 1997. Now, I just wonder now if Anton LaVey and Mount O'Hara have ran across each other in hell, both screaming that there is a God, that Satan is a loser, and Tom LaVey was worshiping Jesus now on his knees. Please, God, let me out of this place. I'm sorry. Marilyn O'Hara, please, God, let me out of this place. I'm sorry. Only to await judgment day for the judgment and the second death into the lake of fire. Now the cancer is starting to grow more. We became hippies. I was one of the hippies. And I thought I was doing well. But we come to the hippie movement. And that's when the drugs and the sex and the laziness and, and, and stuff started going on and, and the demoralization of America and of our youth has taken place. America's cancer is now growing. And then you had Timothy Leary. Timothy Leary 
was a psychologist, I believe he was, if that's the word for him. And he, he figured and thought that LSD was good for a person who was having uh, mental problems, that it was a good psychiatric drug to give patients. Now here we go, America's having problems mentally, and this guy, Timothy Leary, wants to pass him out LSD where they'll hallucinate. America's death is, is coming closer and closer. America is dying, is dying. Well then, Timothy Leary took his last so-called trip, I guess, with or without LSD, May 31st, 1996, at the age of 75, he passed on and went on down to the place where Marilyn Murray O'Hare and Anton LaVey now awaits sentencing, that place called hell. And that trip that Timothy Leary took, his last trip, his last breath, with that trip on the way to hell. So now you have a psychiatrist, a, a psychi uh, uh, what was he, uh, a psychologist. You have an atheist and a Satanist who demoralized America and helped America get on its board to the death train. America's dying. Now let's jump to 1973. America, by this point, is on his last breath. It's taking its last breath. 1973. Abortion was, illegal, was legalized. Abortion was legalized. 1973. America is now gasping for breath. About to take its last breath. About to die. Abortion. Let's kill babies. We don't want them. We don't need them. That's not God's gift. They're a hassle. What do we want children for? They'll get in our way. We need to keep the population down. So let's kill our babies. America is now gasping for breath and about to die. What do you think is what caused America's death? It started off prayer out of school, Bible out of school, satanic church, satanic Bible, the hippie movement, the LSD, abortion. America was on its own suicide train and it caught up with them. America was about to take their la its last breath. They were gasping for, for, for the last breath of air. And then here comes their demise, homosexuality. When I was a child, if anyone was in the neighborhood, or in the family, and they was known to be a homosexual, they would not stay in the family, or they would not stay in the neighborhood, because the men in that neighborhood, the men in the family, would boot them out. They said it was immoral. They said it was against God. Even though they were drunkards themselves, even though they were women womanizers, they knew that this homosexuality wasn't right. So now America is taking its, its gasping for breath, for air, and it's taking its last breath. So homosexuality comes in on a scene. Now America's cancer is at its stage four. There's no cure. There's no cure. The first homo pride parade took place June the 28th, 1997. They marched 51 blocks down Central Park in New York, New York. 51 blocks, and now they're having homosexual gay pride parades all over America with banners of the rainbow that is mocking God. That rainbow don't belong to you. That rainbow belongs to God. And I've seen them as I preached against these parades. I've seen them stretch across the whole boulevard the whole street with the rainbow flag and it said love and it had Satan on it. They know who their daddy is. They know who they're going to. They know they're going to die and go to hell. That's why they're so angry at God. They won't change their ways and God has turned them over to a reprobate mind. America is at a stage four cancer at this point. And they're marching down the parades. I've seen them with men 
in leather leather uh, leather jack straps or, or whatever you want to call those things. And then they have little boys, six, seven, eight years old, marching with them, just to waving the, the the rainbow flag. And they got and as the little boys are marching down the street, here you got these homosexuals on the sidelines with their mouths drooling like a pit bull at a steakhouse. And yet they think it's okay. But it's an abomination to God. God does not like it. God is against it. And God will take care of it. So then America is now in its coffin. America's died. And it's continuing to die. So now, what closed the coffin on America? America has died. Now America landed in its coffin. And now the coffin is about to be closed. June 26, 2015. A man closed the lid on that casket on America as America laid in that coffin dead. June 26, 2015. Homosexual marriage has been legalized. A man can marry a man. A woman can marry a woman. And that man who legalized homosexuality was no other than Barack's O Satan. He closed the coffin on America. America's now dead. America's now dead. There's no revival in America. There's no resurrect in America. But you yourself can come to Christ today. You don't have to be one of the Americans laying in that casket. You can accept Christ in your life tonight. You don't have to be one that's laying in that casket. You need Jesus in your life. America has died. The death of America. The death of America. I never knew that when I was a child that this would happen to America, that I would get to see it. And now I'm looking right, right at it. At the age of 67 years old, I'm looking at America, America's funeral. People don't realize America died. Well, Jimmy Miller here, a servant of the living God, an enemy of Satan. Repent, America. Cry out to God. We need Jesus. America has died. America is in the casket. It's over with for America. But you can come to Christ and you can leave this earth knowing that you can go to heaven. He's calling you. You know who you are. Christ is calling you. He wants you to come to him. Cry out to God right now. Tell him, Jesus, I'm a sinner. I need you in my life. Forgive me, Father. Strengthen me. I believe you rose from the dead and died for my sins. And I want to walk in your ways. I want to go to the kingdom of heaven, the place of paradise. That's you. Pray that prayer. God bless you. God bless you.